Welcome back to another edition of The Dish. Ed DeRosa, soon to be joined by the Paddock Prince, David Levitch. We took last week off because we needed to give uh, Mr. Levitch an opportunity to lick his wounds. David, I heard you didn't have mage. I did not have mage, and it's very ironic. I should have had mage because I like forte, and mage ran a similar race to forte in the Florida Derby, and I still didn't come up with mage, but I didn't like mage in the Derby because of his problems at the gate, and it Looking back on it, it's easy to say after, but if you like the horse that he barely lost to with the somewhat tough trip, you should probably have the horse somewhere. But I just didn't like his antics at the gate, but he he backed it up, his Florida Derby with a big performance. Javier gave him a great ride, got right to the rail, angled out, and got a perfect – he got pretty much a perfect trip from considering his running style, I would say. He never really got stopped at any point, and everything was smooth. Yep. No, I, I uh, you know, bought into the, I guess, lack of hype about not running it too. Just kind of figure justify an aberration, but I'm, I'm going to have to be done with that angle now. I mean, this horse ran too good in the Derby to think it can't be done. And to your point, uh, you know, the Florida Derby was a, was a solid race and Forte certainly factored for me, even if not the top pick. And this horse, uh, I mean, I think something I missed too, not missed, but didn't really think about that plays into it a little bit to your point is mage was, I mean, Forte took a lot of money in the Florida Derby, but mage was clear. Second choice. I was kind of surprised with his price and the first people knew the talent he had um, and he ran well that day and then backed it up in the Derby. So just got that one wrong. I mean, that's all there is to it. Yeah, but deep down, I really hope he does win the Preakness because I think, I mean, this is a captain obvious comment. The Belmont's a lot more fun when there's a triple crown on the line. And he could he could not have picked an easier spot in the Preakness to advance to the Belmont with the triple crown on the line. No. because And he didn't even pick I the spot. That, That's where he has to go if he wants to win the triple crown. Yeah, and I went, that was kind of sarcasm because he this field is, <laughs> I mean, there's like two horses in there that are absolutely hopeless. And then there's... There's a couple fresh faces, like first mission, I guess, Blazing Sevens, but I don't know. It's just I feel like if he can come back in two weeks with somewhat of a similar performance, I think he's going to win the race, but I guess that's what we're here to discuss. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, we, we've seen it, and I think we've maybe somewhat spoiled by the way Bob Baffert has managed to have such a stranglehold on the race with his derby winners, uh, at least the ones that come back on two weeks, obviously the two triple crown winners, but I mean, through the years, he just has a way of, of winning this race right back. And he said his, his job was to train him for the derby. And on two weeks, they're, they're still coasting. And it seems as if mage, if that's the case with him and he's still at that level, he's going to be tough to beat. I mean, that Derby got a five on the Ragazin, came back quick, really on any speed figure you would want to use. It w- it's going to take a lifetime best for anyone to beat him. Yeah. And everybody likes first mission. Well, I think first mission, I guess would be the most likely upsetter. Um, he did beat Arabian lion last time with a somewhat good trip. So I don't know how short of a, what I'm saying is if first mission's the five to two, two to one range and mage is the eight to five, like his morning line suggests seven. I feel like mage is almost better value than first mission. Cause I think mage is just a better horse and mage has only run four times. So I don't know if, if that's a lot to ask for him to run in two backs, two weeks back, but maybe he's just going to keep getting better and better. Cause he really has only run four times. So right. there might even be more room for improvement. Well, if he, imp- if he improves off the derby, he's, he's one to 10, uh, if he maintains the same, he's still a likely winner. I'm gonna personally, I'm gonna have to bet on regression just because I don't want to take seven to five. But your point about first mission when it comes to betting this race, I, I think is right. Between the two of them, if you like one or the other, you're probably gonna be okay with the price you get because none of the other six really factor in my mind. Uh, and then as you noted, there's two absolutely hopeless. And if they're, let's say, 20 to one, which based on the last few big races we've seen could be possible. I mean, that's 10 points out of the pool. Yeah, I I, I think um, National Treasure, I just, maybe it's in my head because it's Baffert and he's back and he's on the Triple Crown Trail again with a horse. Uh, he did draw well in the race, so he's going to be forward yeah. from the rail. Um, I, I would say he was probably the most touted Baffert outside of Arabian um, Knight who got hurt. And never really made it on the trail. Everybody always liked National Treasure. He really, he's kind of spotty when he runs. I think they're putting blinkers on. 
And it's just, it just scares me when Baffert has a horse in the race. So I'm definitely going to consider him at some um, pick fives, but yeah, like you said, I think, I think everybody's going to go to first mission. He's the most wise guy of wise guy horses. I think in the wind pool for Preakness, which, you know, is a, is a different type of pool than day to day, not quite the Derby, but people like betting the Derby winner. Uh, I think if you like first mission, that's your spot. Whereas if, if you think, oh, I'm going to get some, you know, KG value on first mission in the pick five, no shot. Like to no. me, that's where people who handicap the race and think, oh, I'm going to try to beat Mage with first mission, that's where they're going to go is the exotic. So I think the wind pool is your best opportunity with first mission. And then if you like anyone else besides the top two, obviously uh, any of the pools is available. Uh, head to head, red route one or perform. Perform. I actually had a conversation with somebody today about perform. I don't know if perform is good enough. He's obviously not good enough on numbers to win the race, but I feel like that horse has a real chance to get third in this race. He's like the only horse that I read route one. He had a perfect trip last time. And I don't know. I feel like he's just want to ask me since lesser horses. I, I don't know. I He's not my favorite. I actually think perform has a legit chance to hit the board and maybe like third. Sure. No, I, I agree with that. Uh, he's 15 to one red route one's 10 to one. Now those are win odds granted. So I mean, well, we'll never know. Cause we don't see the, the, the money horses get underneath in the verticals, but if there were a head to head wager, I would, I would take perform. Um, and I'm going to look more running that. styles. They're going to have their similar running styles. Right. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think and perform his ragazin actually was slower than Red Route One's last out, but I mean he was on the rail the whole time in the Tessio, but and I'm not a big wild by replays guy, but at the eighth pole, I knew who won the race and was still like, Oh, is there a DQ? Like how does this horse win from there? So I his maiden win was good too. Yeah, uh yeah, I mean he, maybe he's just finally put it together in those company lines, disarm, raise cane uh mage and obviously mage better than the other two but i mean derby winners in his company lines and maybe he's just figured it out and the fact that should you know convince the owners to put up 150 that's what i was gonna say not should, either he doesn't strike me as a trainer that would just throw a horse in a race to throw a horse in a race so if shook has got confidence that he can run well i would and you know blazing seven's a horse that i think has ability i just feel like he might be a one-turn horse but chad brown is very good in the preakness so He's done really well at skipping the Derby and then winning the Preakness. And this horse is just worries me about the distance a little bit, but I guess we'll see. He's a fresh horse. He's training. He got IRAD. So you got to demand a price on him, though. I need at least eight to one for me to have any chance of really liking him. No, oh, well, you're not getting that. I know. That's the problem. I can't take him at five to one. Right. No, that that is the, I'm really the issue with the whole race. I mean, even first mission, five to two. No way I'm interested. But if if the public gets crazy on Mage and, you know, a couple of the, the the bottom half of the field takes more money than it should, then maybe I think first mission could be three to one or seven to two. And that's a little palatable, but yeah, there's just nothing to, to be overly excited about. But there are 12 pick fives this weekend. At <laughs> you know, I saw that. It's like rolling pick five after <laughs> rolling pick five. What is that? Why are they doing that? Uh, I mean, they're all 12% takeout, too. So it's, it's not like oh, that... they're they're trying to suck the money in. Uh, it, it is a lot. But three of the pick fives end in the Preakness. Uh, so to me, that uh, I think there there is... To me, that's any potential for opportunity is a 12% takeout pick five, which is great. And then, you know, taking your stand somewhere, figure out which of the three pick fives makes the most sense. Or, you know, maybe it's it's Wait. all three and you're trying to get live to some or trying to use prices to get live to the logicals. But that to me is is where the play is going to be. Are the three that in there, is it the all dirt two day pick five, the regular pick five? Like the, what's the third one? There's an all stakes. That's what I'm talking about. So there's an all stakes, there's an all dirt pick five, and then what's and then what? there's a Saturday only the five races. Oh. So it's two two days, 
So make sure you get involved Friday if you want to play in, in the pick five, all the pick oh, fives okay. that end in the Preakness. But yeah, so on Friday, there's a pair of two day pick fives that end in the Preakness. And then Saturday, there's the races ninth main one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because I saw that old dirt one that starts on Friday. I didn't know there was two ones that start on Friday. Yeah. Well, read all about it at HRN, where you can also get the Paddock Prince. Yeah, well, I'll be doing Pimlico Friday, Saturday, Belmont all four days, and then I'll be having Churchill, but Jason Perry will be subbing in for Love the it. four yeah, four days at I Churchill. Haven't, uh, I haven't tuned into Belmont because they, they started – uh, Derby week this year, and then last week I was just kind of you know mellowed out. But no, you were worried about Indiana. That's true too. They got a big day tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, stakes. They got Ired, uh, Sayas. Um, there's like Florent. There's a lot of jockeys going there. Wow. Deshaun. Deshaun will uh, be there. Yeah. Luis Machado will be there. If we're going to just start naming a bunch of random jockeys, he will be there. Well, Declan Cannon was at Belmont this week. He did. He, he rode in the um, the not so much Grade One Man of War. Man of War, yeah. A nine year old one. Yeah. A nine year old New York bred. What a game! I think the turf division is hurting. Well, it it's been pretty light domestically for a while. It has. It has. So yeah, no, we got a lot going on this weekend. Though Belmont's been very fair, very fair. Good, yeah, a lot of turf races there. They make the most of the courses, and uh, three weeks out from Belmont Stakes, uh, but this week it's the Preakness, and I actually from talk. I mean, we had a good conversation. We doped out the field. I I'm eager to see who you actually end up putting on top. I've I've done the quick glance. I haven't just I haven't made an official decision, but I got to look at the other races to see how the sequence goes together. Right, and then- that's how I am. Like if when I do a full card, you know, whether it's for the Courier Journal or HRN or the Grid, yeah. like, I'm definitely inclined to use a price in the feature if I'm chalky before that. But then if I'm like, oh, I gave some prices before it, I'm more inclined to be like, well, I really like this horse and he's the chalk, but. Like, if you get live to him, you'll be fine. So. Well, on Friday, the Black Eyed Susan has the Bafford horse, uh, Faza, Fazia, however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, a Faza lot of people, there. yeah, a lot of people are going to single her. And I think there's a single in the race before, two races before, whatever the Philly turf race is. So, you know, it's just kind of picking and choosing. So right. I'm not going to pick, I'm not going to pick a horse like Faza at six to five if I've, if that's not who I like, it that's not value to me. So I'll single elsewhere and then try to beat her. I don't know if I'll do the same in the Preakness because I do yeah. think they one hundred percent the horse to beat. All right. Well, we will uh, we'll dish next week. We won't give you the week off, win or lose. So uh, we'll we'll the rally Belmont. then, and uh, you'll be watching from your phone at at campus. Yeah. Sadly, <laughs> I'll be watching on my iPhone for two all the whole week. The whole weekend, I'll be watching on my iPhone. Yeah, that was me on Mother's Day. I get it. Yeah, so if there's any bad trips, I won't be able to see them, really. You'll hear about them, though. Oh, nobody ever talks on Twitter. <laughs> All right, that's the Prince, everyone. Again, picks.horseracingnation.com has a big slate this week. Churchill for a few days, Belmont every day, Preakness weekend, 12 pick fives. Wow, good luck. <laughs>